Hi everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal, and if you'd like to hear about the three things that made me cry this weekend, listen up. Hi everybody, this is Dear Mama Sal, helping you cope with love, life, and other problems. One of the things that made this weekend so magical was, of course, that I learned a lot. And the other was that I received a lot. But the thing that made me truly sad also were things I learned. So I thought I would share them with you. Number one, apparently perfection is required. You know, it really made me cry to hear that from a young man. He was telling me he was really disappointed in himself because he just done a project at school and these, by the way, were sort of 15, 16 year olds. He'd just done a project at school and was devastated because he only got 95%. And I went, what? And he was really so distraught. He'd only received 95%. He thought he'd done enough work to get 100%. And I tried to explain to him that in the real world, some people just never give you 100%, just on principle. And I said, who was it in his life that demanded that he get 100% in everything? And he said his parents. It isn't a surprise to those of you who are in the teaching professions to know that this young man came from an Asian culture. And in the Asian culture, you know, if you have the opportunity to learn, it is expected of you to do incredibly well. But you know, can you imagine living a life where 95% feels like you failed? Wow. I had to have a very serious chat with this young man. Then I heard another story that broke my heart. It came from one young man who had explained to me that he lived in an alcoholic home. I'm struggling to talk about this because alcoholism is really a very difficult thing to live with. And for any of my viewers who have been in that environment, you know all about it. It requires the children to grow up really quickly. It also requires children to act like parents a lot of the time, uh, looking after their siblings when the parents are too drunk to do so. I could tell you a lot more about the story, but I'm not going to. But I do need to tell you that the story was so horrific that it tore at my very soul. And I got quite angry and I know that under that anger was a fear for this young man. But you know, the more I listened to him, the more I found out that he really had got this all worked out. His other siblings had already left home and were safe with other members of the family and that his plan was to do the same. And that he'd got that all worked out very, very nicely. Thank you. And that aunts and and grandparents and all sorts of other people were there for him and ready to help him live the rest of his life. I don't know about you, but it makes me angry that any young man needs to be going through that at that stage of his life when he should be concentrating on his schooling. The third thing that made me cry was something that actually made me cry with joy. Uh, one of the other speakers this weekend was a young lady I met probably eight, nine years ago when she was a participant in one of these type of events. And it was really funny when I met her, she was one of those really gung-ho sorts, you know what I mean? She was really participating in everything and she was just, you couldn't do enough. And I got to speak with her very quietly away from everybody else uh, during one meal. She and I just went off and sat at another table. And during that meal, I found out that she had all sorts of things she was doing. She was busy skydiving and that she was busy bungee jumping. And she was busy just qualifying. This was an age, age group that was quite a bit older, um, but she was busy qualifying to become a cop. And I know that as I listened to her story, I looked at her deep into her eyes and said, what I hear is obviously that you're an overachiever, but what I hear is that you actually are trying to end your life. And she said, what? I said, well, think about it. Skydiving. 
What are the chances of something going wrong there? Pretty good. Bungee jumping. Oh, and by the way, what are the chances of dying as a cop? And I said to her, you know, it's really strange because everything that I feel about you, everything that I, uh, when I listen to you, everything I feel is that you actually are somebody that would do far better in, in a nurturing environment, maybe helping young people and not being this super overachiever, jumping out of airplanes and off bridges and putting themselves in the line of fire. I, I don't know why, but that's what I've got to tell you. And so I cried when she stood up and told her story and mentioned that she'd met me before <laughs> and what had happened. But I thought it was wonderful to hear that she's involved in a charity. I don't know if you know Big Brothers and Big Sisters, but it was amazing because she actually is doing exactly what I imagined her doing, which is nurturing and helping people rather than putting herself in the line of fire. And she was saying how happy it makes her, how every day she gets up and looks forward to it, and how nice it is to be around people that actually understand her issues and can work with them. So this is dear Mama Sal saying, one of the most important things we can give one another is support. One of the most important things you can do for somebody is if you listen to them tell your story and what you're hearing sort of adds up to what you think might be a negative end, you know, it's a good idea to mention it. Now, I said at the time, I might not be right, but this is what I hear. And she never forgot it. <laughs> so it was wonderful, and yes, it did make me cry to be in the same room as her again, nearly a decade later. This is Dear Mama Sal saying, thanks for listening. If any of this made sense to you, then remember to share it, remember to subscribe, and we'll see you on the next vlog. Bye-bye for now.